The recent winter storms put the Sierra in extremely deep snow levels, but not much rain came down in lower elevations. In this week's Weather Extra, meteorologist Darren Peck shows us why that's the case. Interesting thing about all that snow that fell in the Sierra over the last week or so. Breaking records for snow depth, in fact. That's Yosemite Valley. That's Curry Village. Those are the tent cabins in Curry Village. On the last day of February, Yosemite Valley broke a record for daily snowfall on that date with uh, just about three feet and four inches coming in one day. It's the most they'd recorded. Got to go all the way back to 1969 for how long that record had stood. If they're breaking records for how deep the snow is in the Sierra, why weren't we doing the same for rain in the valley? We, I mean, we got rain while we were seeing snow in the Sierra, but we weren't seeing anywhere near the huge amounts of rain you would think you would need to make all that much snow. And there's an important distinction and an element in terms of snowmaking that will help us understand why you didn't need to supercharge this storm with big amounts of rain. This was not an atmospheric river but it was cold. That made all the difference because the way snow forms is fascinating if you look at it. The two most important ingredients for snow are how much moisture are you working with, but then equally as important, if not more, what's the temperature? So we're gonna watch this through the different phases of how snowflakes form and it's gonna help us understand why the snowpack in the Sierra was so enormously deep when we just kinda of had ho-hum rain amounts for the rest of the state down at lower elevations. If you look at the temperature on here between 25 and 32 degrees, that's relatively warm when we talk about snow formation. And as it turns out, in that range of temperatures, the way a snow crystal will develop, they're all gonna have six sides, by the way, and at this range, you get these thin six-sided plates. But as we get colder, things start to change. The next phase is not as interesting. Between 21 degrees and say 25, you just get these needles. Not all that pretty. You're not getting the real pretty crystals at this stage. So let's move on and find the more interesting stuff. We're getting colder now. Between 14 degrees and 21 degrees, the snow crystals are actually falling as columns. They're hollow actually. Notice how they're still six-sided, and that's a theme. All of these are six-sided. It has everything to do with the molecular structure of the way these things form. They're all gonna be hexagons. So we've reached a stage now where, where those little crystals are falling through the air as columns. But once we get a little colder, we go back to the more interesting stuff. Now we're back to something snow scientists call stellar plates. We're back to the hexagon, that little plate, but what you're starting to see happen now along the edges of it, each little corner there develops its own little plate. Now things are getting really intricate. And here's where things get fascinating, where they get just downright gorgeous to look at and almost mind boggling. Because when you get down to this temperature range, between like three degrees and 10 degrees, you start to get what's the most impressive thing of all, dendrites. So, you start out with your six-sided crystal. But at this temperature, it's cold enough that the crystals keep growing upon themselves. So instead of just getting that plate where you get more little six-sided crystals that grow out on the edges, at this stage and at this temperature, the growth continues out on the edges. So you keep putting plate upon plate, formation upon formation. Pay no attention to the eight sides on this. The graphics department back at Central got it wrong. Every snowflake is six-sided. So I wanna show you what that looks like in real life. This is an actual photograph of a snow crystal. It's six-sided. But it's not only six-sided. On each one of those edges, at just the right temperatures, another six-sided little crystal has grown out from that. And if this thing can stay airborne long enough in this correct range of temperature and humidity, you just keep growing out the dendrites and they become spectacular. Now there's an important aspect to why the snow got so deep in the Sierra without equally impressive amounts of rainfall. It got really deep, not because it was a particularly wet storm. The snowfall in the Sierra got so deep because it was cold enough. It was a very cold storm in that part we did experience down here. And with cold enough temperatures, we got enough gorgeous dendrites like this 
that there's so much air in between the crystals now, these things start stacking up and creating space down at this level. And when you do that, you can get a really deep snowpack without as much water. It's one of the more gorgeous things when it comes to watching snow accumulate. It doesn't happen all that often in the Sierra because we're relatively warm and we also have relatively higher amounts of moisture. So you don't often get those beautiful dendrites. But the way the storms have come together over the last week and a half or so gave us those gorgeous little dendrites and gave us just staggering amounts of snowfall accumulating in depth. That's this week's Weather Extra. We'll take a look at some more interesting aspects coming up next time.